Hi, YouTubers and podcast fans. This is Tori of Black Spaces, your home for the unique critique of sci-fi from a Black LGBTQ plus perspective. Today, I'm going to talk about literary inspirations that lead to movie representations. Now, before I get started, please remember to hit that notification button as well as like and subscribe in order to keep Black Spaces alive. Now, let's get into it. One of my core beliefs when it comes to entertainment is the book is usually better than the film. It's just something about an author's ability to partner with the reader to create a world filled with sights, sounds, and sensations that for me create a wonderful way to pass time. But every so often, a piece of written work that inspires a visual adaptation that allows both creative endeavors to stand out on its own merits while still sharing the same spark. Brown Girl in the Rain by Nilo Hopkinson and Brown Girl Begins, directed by Sharon Lewis, are examples of how visual representation can build on the source material, but also chart its own path. Brown Girl in the Rain was published in 1998 and is set in Toronto, where those with means have to part the city center, leaving behind burned out buildings and groups of people struggling to survive. The main character, Tijan, and her unnamed infant son lived with her grandma, Mamie, who was a healer and practitioner of religion involving nightly rituals that call upon spirits to act on behalf of mortals. The father of T. James' child, Tony, is a drug addict, and he is employed by a man who relies on an unworldly force to help him achieve his means. When her baby father is called upon by his employer to retrieve the human heart, Tijan has to accept her role in continuing the legacy passed down from her grandmother so that she can become a conduit for the spirit world. She had rejected her destiny out of resentment for how it impacted her mother, but in the end, she embraced her calling. Brown Girl Begins, released in 2017, is also set in Toronto, and it also features a lead character, Tijan, who lives with her grandmother, who is also named Mamie, and is also a priestess who encourages a reluctant Tijan to claim her spiritual power. See the seven audience? She doesn't have a child in the movie, but a young girl does bring forth her protective nature. Just like in the book, Tijan has a lover named Tony, who she rather focus her attention on rather than rail against the dark forces part in her community. And just like in the book, the main character claims her power to derail the ambition of a negative force. And in the process, she accepts her role as a healer and priestess. Brown Girl Begins is intended to be a prequel of Brown Girl in the Rain, and it's evident how the two works tie together. The post are left apocalyptic setting, the incorporation of spiritual concepts such as honoring deities like Papa Legba, and the journey of a young woman claiming her place are evident in both works. The visuals and the movie are phenomenal. Now I really enjoy the Afrofuturistic vibe of the clothing choices in the movie. I love all the makeup and the feathers, and everything is just so next level. I especially love the deeper meaning behind the villain in the movie being known as Crack and that she wielded a whip to punish those who challenged her. I also really enjoyed the fact that both works place black women in command and defending and defeating the negative forces that tended to harm their community. Brown Girl Begins is an inspiration rather than imitation, and it's a great way to honor the literary source material. Thank you for listening. This is Toy of Black Spaces, your home for the unique critique of sci-fi from a Black LGBTQ plus perspective. Now, please remember, hit that notification button as well as like and subscribe in order to keep Black Spaces alive. Until next time.